colleagues, I, my name is Mitzarel Peña uh, from the National Department of Transport and uh, my portfolio uh, includes both safety, security and environment protection. Um, so when you see uh, all the vessels that are, that are in our waters, um, if it's a merchant ship, it is in our space because my office has cleared that vessel to be in our space. If my office doesn't clear it, it won't enter, uh, especially around uh, the, the, I mean, outside the port limits. If it does that, I will arrest. Um, and I have my, my friend here, I just say, hey, somebody is misbehaving, and then he will do the rest, you know. So uh, we, we perform a very important uh, task. We are now talking uh, maritime security, and, and that function is a maritime security function. Um, the, the Department of Transport works very, very well uh, and, and very, very close uh, with, uh, with the SANDF, or rather, let me just say, uh, the security implementing agents, all of them. SSA, NICOC, SAPS, you know. So because when a vessel comes, it has to submit a pre-arrival notification. And in that pre-arrival notification, it's information that tells us who is this vessel, who is in that vessel, uh, what are they coming to do here, uh, and, and all the security cluster get that information from, from my office in Pretoria. And then they will then advise us to say, you know what, we are looking for this vessel. Uh, I can either say, okay, you are cleared, come here while my boys are lying low. And then they will do what they have to do. Um, I, I requested to, to, to present, to make a presentation. Um, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm technologically challenged or what. doesn't move well yeah um, it's it is not a very long presentation uh, it's about uh, six slides I will be very very fast um, and and what I'm doing I'm basically touching on the main points of national maritime security strategy um, from the perspective of the National Department of Transport um, the, the question is, what are we talking about when we talk of maritime, national maritime security strategy? And, and colleagues in this room will know the Department of Transport is the focal point uh, at the International Maritime Organization. We basically represent uh, the interests of the Republic of South Africa at the United Nations Agency. Um, now, everybody had... Um, the, the first most two important speakers, the, the, chief, um, the chief of the Navy and, and our representative from, from Defense Intelligence, they, they really uh, touched on the element of piracy. Piracy is a nightmare uh, in, in the, I mean for, the, for the shipping industry. Um, and, and we always speak about what is happening in the Horn of Africa including the rest of the Gulf of Aden. And, and also um, the, uh, the colleague from Defense Intelligence touched on the piracy that happens on the Gulf, Gulf of Guinea. Now, if, if, you, if you dig deep the, about piracy activities on the two sides uh, of the continent, they take a different shape from each other. They are not the same. Um, now, uh, what, what happened here? Yes, and, and there are other uh, strategies. Um, I mean, while, while piracy is, is a problem, uh, there are other risks as well. Uh, IUU fishing um, and, and the IMO, I mean, the, the United Nations has put in a lot of resources to try and assist as many countries as possible in addressing this issue. The, there is an issue of smuggling of drugs, the issue of uh, smuggling of weapons, 
the issue of smuggling of pe of, of people, uh, you know, the, the concept of human trafficking. Um, there is a problem of uh, uh, terrorism against oil and gas installations. Most speakers here talked about what is happening in the north of Mozambique, uh, the Capo Delgado uh, uh, challenges. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very serious problem. And now what we say is these risks undermine the value of a well-developed maritime sector and blue economy as recognized within the sustainable development goals laid down by the, by the United Nations. All these issues have similar solutions. Uh, and, and I think we, we must all agree. It's, we don't have problems, but there are no solutions. These ones do have solutions. The political will, the adequate legal frameworks, the maritime situational awareness which many people referred to, the law enforcement capability assure, interdiction capability, uh, interagency cooperation. And interagency cooperation has been emphasized quite, quite a lot of times. I don't, I don't have to expand on that. Now, if you look at the, the last bullet point, that's the one which is very important. And, and it speaks to why we are here today. Now, it is critical that all of these solutions are captured under a forward-leaning, holistic, and ambitious national maritime security strategy. Uh, now, what is a national maritime security strategy year after NMSS? It is a high-level strategic policy framework and a shared vision for securing a country's maritime domain including its ports and territorial waters. So if it is anything that has to do with what is happening in our waters, we must make sure that it is covered in the National Maritime Security Strategy because we want it protected and we want to know what is happening in that space. Um, now, um, that's just a, a list of, of what, uh, what basically uh, the National Strategy uh, on maritime security will will uh, will entail. It will establish the maritime security responsibilities for uh, for government agencies. Those who do spend the time at sea will tell you um, in government most government departments have one or two things to do at sea. You know that's why some people sometimes refer to uh, to the sea as the tenth province. It's because there is life. Out there. there are people who live there. Uh, people can people spend months and months at sea without even coming uh, or on land. You know, uh, it streamlines the planning and the investments. There are ad it advances the maritime security agenda, which, in most cases, hardly gets support from the powers that be. That agenda is is, is very important. It facilitates cooperation in defining and achieving a set of national objectives. It creates a national framework and it coordinates approaches to intelligence gathering and analysis, risk management and assessment. Intelligence gathering in that space is, it doesn't come second to anything. The, the challenges in, in, in Capo Delgado, you know, uh, when you speak to quite a lot of, uh, of security experts, some of them will say, one of the problems is the lack of intelligence in that area. And, and, and some of the people sometimes do have the intelligence, but they then undermine the information they have. Because basically what is happening, that side of the, uh, of the region, is embarrassing to say the least. Very, very embarrassing. Um, it's, it's not like we woke up today, we heard about Capo Delgado and the threats, and, and then the next thing, uh, there is an attack. We knew. It was just, we were waiting when. Yeah, we, we were just waiting. Uh, when is it going to happen on Monday or on Tuesday? And when it happened, uh, it becomes news, as if we never knew. You know? um, but what are the benefits? Uh, look, the, 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 the strategy that um, basically we have set up a team already uh, that is working on the National Maritime Security Strategy. We have set up the team. Um, the effective strategy will highlight the existing state of affairs. It will provide a vision for what the future should look like. 
and it will devise a plan of action on how to get from the present to the future. If it doesn't do any of those, uh, it means there is a huge gap that we left out. However, um, uh, and then the, the, the direction provided by the NMSS will ensure that uh, it avo RSA avoids costly duplication of effort. You know, when the colleague from Defense Intelligence was presenting here, there was a question that came about the duplication of effort. There has been lots of presentations or talk about um, maritime domain awareness. You know, in, in South Africa, it's not like we, we don't know what is happening at sea. The biggest problem is uh, the Navy, they have their own system. DI have their own system. Uh, Department of Fisheries, Forestry and Environment, they have their system. SAMSA have their system. Um, SAPS, they, they are working on, the, on, on a system as well. Um, you, you, and, and, and it's a problem. Sometimes you find that in one department, there are two or three divisions, each of them working on their maritime domain system. CSIR is working on quite a lot of those as well. Now, the, the problem in, we have in the main right now is integration. We, what we need is somebody who will then own that space, who we all say, if you want to know the A to Z of what is happening in our maritime domain, you must go to so and so. Not that the others can't have their systems, because their systems will be a uh, purpose uh, built, so to speak. So, so, so it's a, it's, it is a very important uh, thing for, for us to, uh, to note. Uh, now, what, what does, uh, okay, the, you can look at the last point, which says the NMSS is the, uh, is the key, yeah, is the key enabler of regional stability. You, you can't speak about regional stability if you yourself, you don't know, um, you, you are not stable yourself. So, so you, each country must have a maritime security strategy, which will then serve as an input to a regional, a regional one. So, uh, I guess now I'm, I'm about to finish. Now, on the regional strategy, the threats are still the same, what, what we have at, at national level. Um, the, the crimes are transnational. So what you need is a regional cooperation between naval forces and other regional security formations. We need a reliable regional information sharing uh, network. Um, we need bilateral and multilateral either uh, agreements or memorandums of ag understanding. Um, we need participation, very strong participation at international fora. You will realize that on that point I've also added preparatory meetings, which is something which is very lacking when we go to international uh, uh, meetings. You know, I, I go to a meeting in whether it's the UK or the US or wherever. And in that meeting, Mauritius makes a point and I don't agree with it. It is very, very embarrassing for me to raise a hand and say, I don't agree with Mauritius. Because Mauritius is part of SADC. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, oh, what's happening with these guys? So, so, so these, these are some of the things that, that we have to, to look at. And, and the, 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 the main interesting thing with maritime is that it is internationally regulated. We've got treaties, we've got conventions, we've got codes, be it ISPS code or Djibouti code of conduct or any other form of code. So, so we, we all are moving in the same direction. It is the management of, uh, of this space which, which might be a, a, a problem. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I think you've covered just about everything we're gonna be putting on the table. But uh, nevertheless, to ensure that we are all on the same page, I'm going to give uh, each department uh, that is uh, represented here an opportunity to 
state their view of the maritime security strategy and uh, approach and then if there's any differences and those are going to be the points of our discussion uh, the next person that's going to be getting an opportunity will be admiral mkonto representing the sa navy and i suspect that you are going to go broad and expand to the dod in general if uh, that is within your scope Thank, thank you, Program Director. Uh, good, uh, good morning, uh, Chief of the Navy, sir. Um, members attending the conference. Uh, good morning. Um, I have not actually broadened up my scope. Actually, as uh, members are actually presenting, I was limiting my scope to actually to the core that actually I'm here for uh, as a panelist. Um, just to steal from what Chief of the Navy actually alluded to, uh, during his keynote address is that uh, maritime security has evolved into a strategic and pertinent topic. Um, we have observed now that the West Indian Ocean has turned up into a maritime security laboratory where we learn almost everything about maritime security. Um, that led me into uh, to this uh, topic that we need now to discuss, that whether South Africa needs a national maritime security strategy. Uh, based on what Sile has just presented, about 25 uh, maritime security stakeholders within uh, the country um, with their different roles and responsibilities, um, each one fighting for political recognition, um, fighting for a little bit of resources, um, at the end of the day, uh, the efforts is actually uh, fragmented, as, as Metz is saying. But now, um, do we really need a national maritime security strategy? Yes, we do. Um, we, we trust that uh, the, 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 the strategy will be able to mobilize um, all the maritime security stakeholders uh, through the governance that will be put in place. Uh, there will be a lot of benefits, as Metsi has indicated. Um, uh, one of the key ones is, we first, we have to actually be mobilized within the country before we can effectively engage uh, our SEDEC member states. Um, just to, to steal your thunder, my friend, is that uh, um, our own maritime domain awareness centers are, are interlinked national. But you just go next to Tanzania, you go to Namibia, Angola, Malagasy, Seychelles. Uh, those are not interlinked. And what is the basis of that? Um, we first, as, uh, as South Africans, we needed to make sure that our national maritime uh, security stakeholders are mobilized in a one governance um, policy to make sure that we speak in one voice when METI goes and negotiate um, or discuss matters during the Djibouti Code of Conduct uh, conferences, soon it will be there, you know exactly what you're supposed to say, and we agree. And if we don't agree, there are certain um, discussion points and facts that you can support yourself with. So I'm saying that we need a national maritime security strategy to make sure that our maritime security stakeholders are mobilized through a an agreed governance. I think I, I, I can for now just pause on that and allow my colleagues to, to say something about the same subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral. Uh, uh, the, the next one will be from SAMSA. Uh, they are take on the South African maritime strategy. Thank you very much. From a SAMSA perspective, we're basically responsible for the safety of people and property at sea the prevention and combating of pollution, as well as search and rescue along the coastline. The search and rescue area that we have to look after is 27.7 million square kilometers, all the way down to Antarctica. So our maritime domain awareness is slightly larger than most. And we need to have capacity to deal with those incidences. And whether that is an integrated unit or for the present moment, a not so integrated unit, we share information. 
And that is what is key to be able to respond to these things. But when we have an emergency along the South African coastline, and we have to remember that a search and rescue incident is a outflow of a security incident. You know, we have innocent passage vessels that's supposed to be innocent uh, on passage, uh, but they do crime. We have uh, illegal fishing happening. Uh, a year and a half ago, we had a fishing vessel just show up at Cape Town Port. Nobody knew they were there. Not the Department of Forestry, Fisheries or Environment, not us, nobody. And that vessel was basically in horrendous condition. Our, the seafarers on board were incompetent, they were not qualified to manage the vessel, there was no food on board, no firefighting equipment, sa other life-saving equipment. This vessel is today still in the Cape Town port. That vessel was arrested in the end, and it was undeclared. Our maritime domain awareness did not have the capability to detect a vessel like that. The other things that flow out of it is if you have a search and rescue incident, and this is what the general public don't really know, Last year alone during COVID, we did 177 medibacks. We also saved 323 lives, and we have basically 275 search and rescue incidents last year. Nobody really knows about it, because if it happens out at sea, it's out of sight, out of mind. I don't know if you guys recall, there was the Wakashio off Mauritius just the other day, about a year ago. Now, at the same time as what the Wakashio was happening, we actually had our own little incident, which would have made the Wakashio look like uh, a small vessel on a rubber pond. We had a VLCC that came within eight cables. Now, the seafarers out there would know what eight cables are, um, off our coastline in Port St. John's. We did not have the assets to respond appropriately to prevent that incident from happening. The only thing that prevented that vessel from going aground is basically the fact that the anchor cable and the anchor got stuck on rocks. That was it. it. Took us 12 hours to mobilize resources from Durban. It took us two days to mobilize a resource from Cape Town that was capable of actually towing this vessel to the port of Durban. There was 4,000 tons of bunker fuel on board. Now, when a VLCC runs aground, we have to ask ourselves if our maritime domain awareness is not good enough, how do we know what assets we need to respond to whatever types of incident there is? whether it is a security incident or a safety incident. How do we know? The amount of times that we respond that we don't have eyes in the skies or we don't have a vessel available to be able to get there. At that time, there was four maritime incidences happening at the same time. We had to bring in uh, uh, private uh, commercial tugs to come and help us. There was only two tugs along the coastline because the SM Mandla, our emergency towing vessel, was two and a half thousand nautical miles away um, trying to bring a fishing vessel back to South Africa. So if you ask me, is maritime security um, integrated uh, units and strategies important? It's absolutely critical. You know, it's about protecting human life out there. It's about protecting your coastline. When you have stowaways being thrown overboard off the port of Durban, between Durban and Reaches Bay, you need to have the ability to track that vessel to whichever port it's going to. We were lucky that the, f that the stowaways that were thrown overboard last year survived. They were three days at sea, and they were only dropped basically within a mile of the coastline, but they got washed out to sea again. And we managed to get attempted murder charges on those, the master and eight other crew members. But basically, the way SAMHSA sees it, it was a slap on the wrist because they got back on their vessel and they sailed. Now that is a security incident where we had to protect life. I'm only saying these things because I want to point out how critical it is that we share information. SAMHSA shares satellite uh, AIS information with other security sectors. We work quite well with state security, the SA Navy, the DFFE, all of them. And it's only through information sharing that we can actually get a true picture out there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the tendency, which uh, is not very prevalent here, but uh, the tendency is that by nature, we become focused in our area of our, our responsibility. And as you have uh, picked up, maritime security is a, a very broad uh, concept that uh, includes everybody and usually it is the academics that will help integrate all the thinking 
and the lessons that have learned, been learned by other countries or in other areas so that all those are integrated into the strategy they inform the thinking and we are lucky now to have somebody that is able to comment in that dimension which allows uh, a, a broader view on uh, the, the, the the breadth of this uh, whole topic and also the little bit that uh, might fall in between the crates. Professor Sir. Thank you for this. Within the oceans debates, um, there are two schools of thought that are competing. The one has to do with your right to use the oceans as you deem fit. Uh, that's your sovereign right, especially for your own waters and elsewhere you compete for maximum benefit. The other debate that's raging is the one about how do you do and execute and direct the responsible use of the oceans in order to preserve oceans as, pro as a productive domain for the future and for future generations. Uh, where does South Africa stand within these debates? It's not only about using the oceans but also not being able to prevent the exploitation of uh, the maritime domain by others in order to make sure that that domain remains productive and that we have clean oceans that deliver for future generations. We must also remember that um, I think to an extent while we are sitting here today discussing this, if we turn around and we look back in time, about 12 years, 11 years back, the whole catchphrase around piracy set off an academic debate, academic research and academic endeavors about how do we contribute to dealing with the manifestation of piracy off the coast of Somalia in particular. This is not to say that this phenomenon did not take place in other waters, but that was a type of a catalyst where academia became involved in particular to look at maritime security, how to define what is often called a wicked concept, and how do you create order and actionable um, results or actionable outcomes as well as how do you order this by means of ways and means to be able to respond. For example, how do we respond to liminality? How do we operationalize liminality about what happens at land, what happens at sea? How do we quantify it? How do we understand it and direct our resources where they are most needed in order to advance maritime security governance? Furthermore, we must also remember that in the case of Africa, the competition came between the Gulf of Guinea as well as the Horn of Africa, where we these days have these rather large high-risk areas. And in a sense, South Africa is perhaps in a position that we are not yet in these high-risk areas. And that leads to the question, why did it take us 12 years to now sit down and consider a maritime security strategy for South Africa? Part of the answer, of course, is that this is something that you can't do overnight and very quickly. This is, it's, I almost want to call it the art of understanding, designing and set in place a maritime security strategy for a country that is tied in to support and cooperate with the regional strategy and to remain in, in line with it international protocols as well as to be able to work with and be in step with the work that Africa has done with regards to AIMS 2050 and the Lomé Charter then in particular. So in conclusion, I want to just mention that so much academic work has been done 
around the matter of maritime security, one of which is, of course, the voids and how do you build the capacity, the capacity building initiative around dealing with maritime security governance is something that attracted very particular attention in order, if you have a maritime strategy on the table at some future point in time, you have to be able to execute it. If you do not have the cap capability and the capacity over longer term to do it, what's it worth? So academic debates do contribute to this in terms of the research that has been done, not only around capacity building, sectors of capacity building in order to be able to execute a strategy by in terms of the ways and means that's required, but also the way in which work has been done around big data sets, governance data sets, and also indexes that has been built about the maritime domain and maritime security in particular that could be of use. So in support of the maritime security strategy that is being done at the moment for South Africa, there's a backdrop of academic work that can come into play to support it and to fill in voids and also to help make that this strategy is something that can be moved from merely paper where departments in fact cooperate, master the art of cooperation in order to execute a maritime strategy that eventually hopefully falls on the side of clean, productive oceans for future generations. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Se. Uh, just uh, one question that's going to go to both uh, transport and uh, the Navy. It has, it has become uh, clear there's two issues that are running parallel uh, at this stage. The SADC is also in the process of developing a maritime security strategy, and we are also doing the same. And it sounds uh, like it's a common uh, attitude that South Africa must first worry about South Africa, first before we worry about our SADC, uh, if I hear correctly, but also what also became very prevalent in the discussions that have happened so far is the fact that even our jump has been triggered by things that have happened externally. I, I am not sure right now, especially for transport and uh, the Navy, that we can actually divorce ourselves from the things that are happening in the Mozambique Channel. Also, I suppose uh, it is very easy to say that the Namibian Navy creates some kind of a buffer on the west, but uh, on the east uh, we seem to be very vulnerable all the way up the coast. Uh, I'd, I would like to hear your thoughts on those. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Facilitator. Uh, look, there is a drive at the moment from the International Maritime Organization to assist member states with developing their national maritime security strategy. Um, it, it seems as if it has not been a priority to most of the uh, member states, especially uh, on our continent. Uh, I know uh, for a fact that uh, countries like Mozambique, like Tanzania, um, and, and others going up, have already given the IMO uh, a go ahead to send a team to assist in developing those, um, developing the document. So, um, and 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 I know uh, the IMO has called me quite a few times, uh, saying you no, know, they would uh, like to uh, to do a presentation to South Africa uh, to provide guidelines on how to uh, to develop a national maritime security strategy. Um, but look, I, I told them that no, as South Africa, when we need you, we will contact you. So, so, but, but they, they really uh, are driving that process uh, through the Djibouti Code of Conduct. Uh, so, so the member states are enjoying the support. Uh, but what does that come with? Uh, because none of the countries uh, have a national maritime security strategy. 
but they are also at the uh, at the regional at the region where they 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 have to to uh, to to form part of the team that is developing the regional maritime security strategy. So even when they go there, it's not like uh, they have a country position already. You know, yeah, that's that's the little I can say at the moment. Yeah. Um. It, uh, if I understand the question very well, is uh, that uh, uh, we having a SEDEC uh, maritime security strategy, or the one, the old one that we had from 2011, or do we have the revised one? Um, if I, I may answer you, is, is that yes, um, uh, we have a, a revised one. Um, I think the SEDEC uh, Standing Maritime Committee set 20, 2018. Uh, 2019 to to actually consolidate um, the the strategy. Uh, we we got that done through the assistance from Institute of Security Studies. Um, to be particular, it was Timothy Walker that assisted us. Uh, we drafted it and uh, we we call it SEDEC Integrated Maritime Security Strategy. Um, slightly different from the previous one. Uh, that was more a uh, concern about the anti anti piracy and the transnational organized crime um, uh, currently the one that we actually uh, uh, revise is saying that uh, we have to include the Atlantic Ocean as well uh, because uh, the threats that is coming from the Gulf of Guinea it might find its way down so the efforts as well must be placed on the west than not actually putting all our efforts uh, in the east. Um, now when we're looking at our national maritime security strategy, whether we should have started with this one so that uh, our own interest must inform the regional one. Um, that one I think is, is something that we need now to engage uh, ourselves, whether we can expedite this one um, uh, to actually add value to the regional one. Uh, but the original one soon, uh, maybe by the end of the year, it might be actually be circulated back because all the member states now are busy giving their input. We're expecting uh, those inputs to be back and then we might find, uh, might find that we've got a revised uh, uh, SEDEC uh, integrated maritime security strategy. And uh, we'll put some efforts to make sure that the national one is done as quick as possible as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. The, the discussion that we've just had has covered the definition of the South African Maritime Security Strategy. We have looked at uh, the interconnection for the various departments within the country, and we've also touched in on the regional connectivity in terms of uh, the strategy, which is sort of uh, in the infancy stages, seeing that both the documents are still being worked on. But already that, if you want to broaden it more, it goes up to AIMS 2050, which, is, uh, which covers the whole uh, Africa. And at this stage, Africa is the only continent that has got an integrated maritime strategy. Fortunately, the resources part of it is a, is a question, but uh, it is obviously, as indicated, leaning forward trying to make do with what we have and trying to achieve what we can within that uh, framework. It is, uh, it is now your opportunity to throw any questions that you would like to throw to the panel and uh, in general or to a specific speaker in particular. Uh, thank you. Program Director, Chief of Navy, sir. Uh, the panelists have uh, made statements and uh, at the same time they've asked questions. So what? What do we do going forward? Uh, what tangible course of action can we take? from this conference now regarding this issue of maritime security. I believe that this is not a, just a talk show. What resolution are we taking on, in this conference? 
Yes, I hear the plans of drafting. Uh, Professor Frey has touched on some of the solutions. Uh, but uh, in terms of the course of action, I'm not getting it from the panelist, or maybe it skipped my mind. So what? What do we do from here? Thank you. Do you want to start on this? Uh, f f thanks to to the to the speaker. Um, that's that's a, a a very good question, and that's the question that made me come to Cape Town a day before the conference. Uh, I I had a very fruitful meeting uh, yesterday with my colleagues. Uh, we were mapping a way forward already, and I did in my presentation highlight that we have put a team together. Um, that is already uh, working and getting their hands dirty on developing the national maritime security strategy. There's, there's quite a lot of work that still has to be done. Uh, we are not necessarily starting from zero. Um, in the past two years, there was a lot of work that, that was done, but unfortunately, uh, COVID caught up with us and there were major delays. Uh, but uh, we, the, the team is solid um, and, and we've got all the expertise in the team and we, we are just hopeful that come the end of this financial year, not calendar year, financial year, we will be having a draft that we will start engaging the different role players. Uh, the stakeholders will say, now it's time for us to consult. We don't want to go and start consultations when we don't have anything in our hands. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, th thank you, um, Metsi. Um, uh, I'll leave this one to, to Professor Frey, but I'll, I'll start saying, to, uh, just to add on what Mezi is saying, is, is that uh, it has come a long way. I think it's 10 years now we're battling to, to actually to put something together. Um, but I think what we, um, a mistake that we have done is that uh, we trusted that our operators will be able to put uh, something on the, on the table. Our op operators, they have their own view on uh, national maritime security. Uh, they will only take maritime security, a security element out of that, in that uh, matrix of maritime security, and amplify it. So we, we got it wrong, totally wrong from there. That's why we, all the 25 um, maritime security stakeholders, each one was taking an element that suits uh, their well being and then amplifying that. Uh, at some stage, they wanted to wrestle it. I said this is a security matter and we said maritime security is not actually a security matter to a certain extent um economy blue economy we've got a say on that national uh, national uh, national national security has got a say on it. human security has got a say on that so all the 25 stakeholders uh, came together and then uh, for the last 10 years nothing came up but because of their uh, roles and responsibility each one wanted its own element to actually to be amplified and what we have done we wrestle it away from them and give it to the academics to look at it um, as Mezi has said uh, yesterday we we had a very fruitful meeting I think uh, Professor Frey can just sum up what was the outcome of the discussion to just make us feel comfortable that there's something uh, coming on that on that way Um, thank you for this curved ball, but um, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what the discussion with the dean was later during the day. Um, I just I just know that there was a, the discussion that we sat in was to try and map a way forward to to take the whole process on the maritime security strategy forward. Because we have to remember that um, if we look back in time, we're looking at a process that commenced in 2019 uh, with certain pitfalls at the moment. And I do think that um, the pitfalls that uh, we looked at and very briefly discussed uh, are matters that have to be attended to. The second part around this is, and um, I'm now going to give a personal opinion on this, this maritime strategy development process must continue. Um, the real art is to, to package the role players correctly. 
in bringing them on board, you have role players that really know what they have to do. I want to point out Department of Environmental Affairs, Fisheries, Forestry, etc., that are heavily involved in uh, Operation Pakisa. So you've got apartments that have got a very specific, known and almost exclusive maritime component attached to it. Then you've got apartments that will have to play a role, but they will have to rethink how it ties into the maritime domain and maritime security in particular. I'm also of the opinion that we can map and work on this maritime strategy in a way that is very good and we can come up with a very good pro uh, product. But I think something we should consider, there should be a very well orchestrated lobbying process in parallel towards uh, the political role players. I know that the Navy, after 1994, in the acquisition of the current uh, platforms that they have, that the Navy was seen to play the role of lobbying the best of all the, the other role players. Uh, but I'd, that's a belief that I have, is that this strategy must be supported by a very well orchestrated lobbying process of decision makers in order to make sure that this does not remain on paper. But that's, that's just my idea. Furthermore, I'm also of the opinion that um, we must remain in step with a larger debate around ocean governance. Because what we are seeing is that this strategy is top of in step already with the, with the general setup you have to have this. And this again feeds back into the realization we are talking about what happened in the Suez Canal. But the catalyst around this was when piracy took off off the coast of Somalia, as I mentioned. This had a ripple effect of just understanding that piracy is just one problem. And coming down in terms of the strategy and the questions about Mozambique, Mozambique, of course, says to us something about reimagining threats at sea beyond piracy. So while piracy draws the attention, Mozambique tells us something else. You don't have pirates there. How did you understand and how did you prepare and how ready are you to deal with the wider ripple effects uh, beyond piracy? Because if you think in terms of problem solution, Piracy is the problem. The solution is anti-piracy in terms of its different um, unfolding ways and means. If maritime security is the matter you want to address, now you have to reimagine the, the, the way in which it unfolds. Whether you look at it through a laundry list, you list it, or whether you look through it by ways of a matrix that is the, the newest type of way of looking at this where you have a matrix that will help you to contract or expand the threats and therefore where your attention should be placed. If you, if you have a maritime strategy like it was mentioned, it will help you to be not 100% but be more ready to respond. If you don't have a maritime strategy, you type of have to, you have to um, regather and mobilize every time you have to respond to a certain extent. And therefore, from my side in terms of the understanding of the maritime strategy that's on the table, that is probably forward-leaning, forward-looking, thinking in terms of alternative futures, uh, preparing for the future. You, you probably are not going to get it 100%. And many Decision makers tell you, don't talk to me about that. But that's not the answer. The answer is you are going to be more ready and prepared as opposed to when you have nothing. And I think that a maritime strategy that is inclusive of the departments for maritime security could help in that regard. And this, of course, brings in 
How do you harness technology? How do you harness your skills? Are you up to date with debates? How integrated are you horizontally in terms of the horizontal span of threats? How integrated are you vertically in terms of institutions and countries and your recs? And are you in step with the latest international, let's call it rules, are you in step with the latest legislation? And then lastly, are you in step with your own legislation? So from my side, that is, that is how I look at it at the moment. Um, it's, not a, it's not a perfect eye that I have, but that is how I understand uh, why it's important and how one can take it forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's two more questions. Uh, the ladies first, uh, ma'am. Um, thank you, Program Director. I have two comments, if I may, not, not questions. Um, the first one is uh, specifically related to maritime domain awareness. Um, it's been extensively spoken about in the, by the previous um, speakers, and the Chief of the Navy in his keynote address also alluded to the importance or, of, of maritime domain awareness as a precursor to maritime security. Um, but what I wanted to, to just point out within the context of a maritime security strategy and the importance of maritime domain awareness, we spoke a lot about intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, ISR. And I think um, Dr. Prince Lu spoke about that uh, particularly and I agree absolutely with, with um, what he said and his suggestions. But what I wanted to caution or um, emphasize is that Maritime domain awareness and, and within the context of a maritime domain uh, or within the context of a maritime security strategy, we must not lose sight of the importance of the ability to act. So we get all this information, we must have the ability to act. And for that you require maritime enforcement. And for that you require, in our case, navies, coast guards, you require assets to do that. So. Um, Professor Frey alluded to the stable or to indexes, and here I'm specifically using the Stable Seas Maritime Security Index, which uh, essentially quantifies maritime security. Um, it doesn't score the Southern African development community very high on this issue area. Um, and I believe, personally, I believe that Project Biro will strengthen the South African Navy's uh, enforcement capabilities substantially. And perhaps um, Admiral Mkonto would like to elaborate on, on how Biro will strengthen our ability to execute our tasks in our constabulary or patrol role, just very briefly. And the second comment I wanted to make, if I may, very briefly, is um, I'm very encouraged to hear about the comments relating to alignment of, mar of maritime security strategies, whether it be within the sub-region, SADC, or with, uh, in the region, uh, 2050 AIMS. But perhaps important to consider as well is the alignment to a national, overarching national security strategy. I think that would be important to, to um, consider in terms of alignment as well. Thank you. Admiral Mkondo, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, Project Pyro is a multi-mission inshore patrol vessels um, uh, the, the the project is really is is actually being executed by the main shipyards in Cape Town to produce uh, three uh, platforms uh, for 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 the following missions um, I think the first one is to enforcement of RSA sovereignty and state authority in support of other state department and uh, other state agencies or other governments, member state within the region. And then uh, the second one is the anti-piracy uh, operation within RSA Maritime Theater, inclusive and support of the African continent. And, and the, the, the third one is the sea reconnaissance operation for monitoring of the, South Af the Republic of South Africa area of maritime interest. Um, the fourth one is the disaster relief and humanitarian aid and the support of diplomatic missions. I omitted purposely the war fighting part of it, of which that is primary uh, our job. Uh, that is basically what the, the, this project is going to actually produce. And um, 
uh, given the, the current uh, budget constraints, I, I think for the next five years, there's a guarantee that we'll have platforms in the channel, that we'll have platforms in our coastal waters. Um, maritime security will be actually, to a certain extent, be addressed through these platforms. I'm glad that you have not asked about water. That will have certain role, different roles as well. So, but I'm saying that uh, members can rest assured that for the next five years, um, uh, we, we're going to be able to actually enforce uh, maritime security in our waters um, without, without uh, any, any, any constraints. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much. I found this most informative and quite feeling quite excited that there seems to be a, a process going. I'd like to link my comment and question to my talk on uh, public-private partnerships. So the question I'd like to put there and then make my comment is, I'm very curious as to what private organizations are involved in this fancy national maritime zhu 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 thing. Uh, and I suspect either none or very few, but that's a suspicion. And I'm making that deduction because you guys are sitting there and you look like you've got a lot of time. And my, my, my third last slide that I presented, the, the first bullet point on that slide is adopt entrepreneurial thinking already. I find that with governments across the world, so it's not a, it's not a criticism to South Africa or yourselves personally, they think they've got time. They think they have a lot of time. Ask the Mozambicans. The people on the ground know they've got no time. Ask the people in Cabo Delgado. Ask the people at the two refineries on our coast, should that be attacked in an outside of the box thinking scenario. The people on the ground don't have time. The private sector, we sit in the middle here. We know how little time we've got because our personal survival, our own salaries, ask Danelle, our own salaries and our sustainability of business and our survival is directly connected with people who make decisions who think they've got time. So my second point is, I'd like to challenge this panel or your bosses or whoever's in charge here, <laughs> make a commitment, give us a date, it's called a deadline. Act on the deadline because the deadline will act on you. Give us a date when this <coughs> fancy national maritime woo -woo -woo will be ready, installed, and when you do that, at the next conference, show us what that has already delivered. Then we're in business, in the entrepreneurial sense, with the public sector in a public-private partnership. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, <coughs> it's a, it's a very interesting comment. Uh, which is also informed by fear. Mm, you know, uh, if we are talking security, we are talking something which is a state responsibility. Uh, so uh, the, the state is now working on a national maritime security strategy. Um, I'm not sure if um, if we if, if the state wants to bring in the private sector to do that job. Um, like I said, um, once the document is ready for consultation, it will go out and, and the members of the public will be consulted. Um, um, and, <coughs> and, and basically the, the project champions uh, will give a final advice on that one. Uh, <coughs> it, it is likely to be a, I don't know if it will be a, a high secret uh, document or what, uh, we we do have a national security strategy in South Africa. We do have it. I don't know how many people in this room have seen it. You know, um, my colleague from Defense Intelligence in his presentation, he did say uh, the Defense Intelligence is is developing a central strategy. I, I I don't know how many people knew about it before he spoke about it. 
you know. Uh, so, so there are certain things which are state responsibility, and and they just don't go out of the door. You know, um, you you might know, but not necessarily that you will participate. That's my comment here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Metsi, you're leaving me with the most difficult one. The gentleman they ask a question um, about a private, a public partnership. Uh, how how do we actually integrate it into our effort in terms of um, enforcing maritime security? Or oh, in general, what we uh, what I can try to answer you is that uh, uh, private uh, public partnership has been happening in in in, in the South African Navy in particular, uh, whether it is a, a maintenance and, and ship repair, it, it, it happens. Um, we've got a dockyard that is actually dealing. Um, uh, with the with private uh, companies uh, to effect some repairs in our in our platforms um it has been happening for quite some time uh, maybe to address the current challenges that we have now then it's something uh, slightly uh, different now um uh, our 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 defense uh, strategic posture uh, maybe general gardner will agree with me in terms of uh, the strategy is that we remain defensive and tactical offensive and in that way, um, it, it is bring out all the, 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 the elements that are supposed to support that strategy. Whether it's sensors, are sensors that we need to plug around the coast, or uh, we opt for um, synthetic aperture radars that will be able to assist us during operation, or we wait for that intelligence that is gathered for us to, to move in. Now, in terms of our partnership, I, I think it's where now the sensor, the sensors can, can come into effect here. Uh, as you said, we don't have to own all the sensors. Uh, we can just activate whoever is actually able to gather information um, to assist us. Uh, but sometimes it comes, you know, a, at a cost. And um, you, you find that even ourselves, we get worried about unregulated, you know, uh, information <coughs> gathering. Uh, we don't know who else is actually accessing that information. So our approach is very careful. Uh, if we opt for private pu public trans a, a partnership uh, will be looking at those bases as to whether the, the partnership is secured um, or if now we don't have money anymore now will you be able to provide information that we're looking for currently we're battling to get actually access information to the Mozambique channel um, uh, we know that there is a, uh, 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 the, uh, the Sansa they've got a, a contract with the, a, a service provider to provide a detailed information about anywhere in the in, in within our coastline uh, but you need to have to have uh, that trust um if now uh, you don't have money don't get information you become worried that you know uh, if this budget cut all of a sudden you don't have access to that information uh, we need something sustainable on that uh, i think that's what i can say for now okay uh thank you admiral what i can say is that uh, strategy uh, in broad terms is a, a term that brings an endless debate. It doesn't matter where, whether you are on course or you are in a planning conference or whatever, it always does. And uh, starting from the definition, the very definition of the word strategy. But uh, that is not the question now because we all seem to be on the same page. But uh, what I would encourage you to recognize is that this is it. You have all the people here that are involved in the formulation of this strategy. What you say here, they will not press the reset when they leave, I hope. And if you've made your point, they will remember when they sit there in those high offices where you may not enter, but your voice will be ringing and it will inform. So this is not a lost opportunity and when we do it again, Please do come and throw your five cent again. Okay, you are a sponsor, you throw your five million again. And uh, we'll, we'll move from there and we learn from you as we go along. I'm afraid uh, this is uh, where this is going to end because of our time. Oh. Okay, uh, one more question and then uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. 
and thank you, Chief and members of the panel. Um, I'm not. M my first question has to do with the regional maritime strategy, and um, it has to do with the issue of trust or trust deficit. Um, to say, especially those that are playing some role in the region towards crafting or putting together a regional strategy. To what extent do you think the issue of trust, either trust directed to South Africa as a partner to be trusted, um, and perhaps the attendant uh, confidence building measures that we need to embark on to ensure maybe enhancing this, uh, uh, this process. To what extent do we think perhaps this is an issue that we also uh, need to, to, to address? The issue of trust, I'm raising it personally because uh, for, historical person, for historical reasons, somehow, I, I, I'm not sure whether rightly or wrongly, it is maybe one of the issues that um, um, if, if not if not addressed, might hamper the, uh, the, the, the speedy process of, of putting together a regional uh, maritime strategy. And maybe the second question then has to do with the BMA, uh, to say, to what extent do you think that the, 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 the BMA is going to affect your respective mandates, um, be it the Navy, be it uh, SAMSA, you know, if, if, if I can hear comments uh, with regard to that. Thank you. Can I just confirm quickly that by PMA you're talking about border management? Okay. Uh, PMA refers to the border management. Does the Navy want to answer the question? Uh, oh, uh, is ready. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak about the, the processes as, as they relate to the border management agency. Uh, look, we we are an, an active participant in the in the process, um, and and we had a session with BMA in which we went through um, our own mandate as the Department of Transport in SAMSA, and we said uh, based on the new mandate that is being given to BMA from our side, this is what uh, this is the type of act that will go into BMA for implementation. So. So there are certain functions that BMA will be taking over uh, from either SAMSA or, or, or the Department of, of, of Transport. Um, look, it, of course, it has its own dynamics, uh, but, but we already have agreed to some of the, uh, of the mandates of the department that, that will be ceded to, to BMA. Thank you. Uh, Admiral, you're going to be responding uh, to that one and also the SADC uh, spirit of uh, confidence and trust. Yeah, I'll, I'll be responding on the SADC um, integrated maritime security strategy on trust matters. Uh, but I've deployed uh, one member here strategically to assist me on the BMA. Um, Admiral, uh, I'll ask you to say something about that. Um, <laughs> I've got the capacity on the floor, so I must not be badly alone here. Um, uh, 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 sir, uh, General, uh, we have dealt with that element. Um, um, uh, I don't know whether maybe it is actually, uh, uh, we've got a few languages uh, within the SEDEC, I think it's one Portuguese from and French uh, from DRC, uh, Mozam uh, Angola and, and Mozambique, uh, and, and the French from Malaga and Seychelles and Mauritius. Um, at some stage, in, when this uh, language comes in, sometimes you misunderstand what somebody is trying to say. Uh, but in terms of trust, I, I don't think we, we've got a challenge on that. Where the trust might be a challenge is now uh, the maritime domain awareness, uh, informational sharing platforms. Um, we've got uh, Malagasy that has got a fusion center there. We've got Seychelles and Mauritius that have got an operational uh, coordinating center. And we've got uh, another platform in, in Tanzania as well. So now 
that part, those three en entities actually can interlink and share information, uh, but they, they, it will be difficult for us to share information. There are some other governance that needs to be exhausted first, and even Messi was part of that discussion on the Djibouti Code of Conduct that we were part of it, but the gender amendment of it, then we, 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 we did not sign. Uh, we had some concern that we need to address first, but it's not a serious issue that it is a trust issue, no. Um, we still need to exhaust some covenants and uh, some, some certain you know, issues that need to be addressed. Um, are we, uh, SEDEC member states, I think they are very friendly people. Uh, we cannot look at them that way that uh, we don't trust them. We do trust each other. It's just that certain issues must be addressed in the right platform. Um, I think I can just pause on that. Um, um, we can assist in terms of the PMA, please. Uh, maybe before we go to Mem, uh, can we ask the Professor Frey to throw his uh, word as well on the matter of trust, especially? Um, if I listen correctly to the reference to Mozambique and trust and cooperation, um, the, the word that comes up regularly is the matter of sovereignty. Um, in regional cooperation and of the kind that uh, is now under discussion, sovereignty as a right uh, and upheld and demanded as a right is not very conducive to regional cooperation where you really have to take an approach that certain elements or certain levels under certain conditions um, should become softer. The opposing or the competing debate or paradigm is um, sovereignty as a responsibility. And countries that conduct and regional organizations that, tr that promote sovereignty as a responsibility creates more confidence and trust and creates more space for cooperation uh, in, in general. Um, at sea, it's perhaps easier to at least uh, make the argument and promote the idea of sovereignty as a responsibility because the, to be able to operate at sea and promote security at sea, it is fundamentally based on cooperation and collaboration. On land, yes, but I do think there, there's, a, there's a certain difference that this is an absolute imperative. If you want to be successful at sea in fighting off uh, the threats that are looming, that um, the, the argument about sovereignty as a right should become softer and rather be seen through the lens of sovereignty as a responsibility in order to promote the type of cooperation that will make a greater success of combating these threats at sea. Thank you. Now we're going to ask the Admiral. Yeah. Um, could I just ask the gentleman to repeat the question with regards to the BMA? The, que the question that I had was um, regarding uh, in, in what ways uh, do you think um, the BMA is going to affect your respective mandates. And I think Mr. Metzi somehow answered that with regard to the Department of, uh, of, Department of, of Transport. And I was happy with the response. It was illuminating. Thank you. That was the thrust of the question. 